हे गाइस वेलकम बैक सो टुडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट कॉम्पनसेटिंग कर्व्स दिस वीडियो विल बी गिविंग इन टू पार्ट्स अबाउट फर्स्ट पार्ट विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट कर्व ऑफ स्पी इन डिटेल एंड द रिमेनिंग कर्व्स इन द नेक्स्ट पार्ट सो बिफोर रिज्यूमिंग द वीडियो इफ यू हैव नॉट सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल अक्षय भंडारीज डेंटल वीडियोज सो लेट्स मूव टू द वीडियो सो फॉर एनी टाइप ऑफ प्रोसेस विच वी गिव टू द पेशेंट we know that the prosthesis should carry out adequate functions aesthetics and obviously prosthesis should be free of interference that is very important so to give these three qualities into the prosthesis what we need to incorporate is plane of occlusion and this plane of occlusion it is any plane which contacts the incisal edges of the anterior teeth as well as the cusp tips of the posterior teeth now what if we do not give this plane of occlusion into the patient's mouth as we do not incorporate the plane of occlusion into the patient's mouth obviously there would be no proper occlusal contacts and as there would be no proper occlusal contacts there would be no proper mastication hence because of the loss of proper occlusal contacts there would be obviously wear of posterior teeth as the time lapses after giving the prosthesis so there would be wear of teeth this wear of teeth further would affect the temporomandibular joint which would lead to disorders as well as joint fatigue whereas then it would lead to the muscle fatigue and in all this harms the stomatognathic apparatus of the oral cavity then the question is how this plane of occlusion is incorporated into the prosthesis hence this plane of occlusion it is incorporated with the help of compensating curves this compensating curves are of two types antero posterior curve and the medial lateral curve today we will be discussing about antero posterior curve in detail that is curve of spee coming on to curve of spee now curve of spee is also called as spee's curvature or antero posterior curve or von graf's curve as it was found by ferdinand von graf spee so he was basically an embryologist who used to study the teeth in a sagittal relationship so during his study he figured out the curve of spee now coming on to extent of curve of spee so this extent we can remember it in three aspects first is beginning second is follows and third is continuous so we all know that curve of spee it begins from the cusp tip of mandibular canine from there it moves posteriorly and it follows the buccal cusp tips of the lower posterior teeth that is premolars and molar and from there it goes continuous along the anterior border of ramus and it ends at anterior aspect of the mandibular condyle next we would see that how this curve of spee forms into the dentition so we know that for any processes to work harmoniously the biting force and the long axis of the tooth they has to be perpendicular to the occlusal plane as when they whenever they would be perpendicular this force it can travel along the long axis of the tooth so the lower teeth whenever they are set into the oral cavity they are always parallel to the arc of closure now just concentrate on the figure in case 1 if we focus on anterior teeth first so this might be an occlusal plane for the anterior teeth and in case of anterior teeth the biting force as well as the long axis of the tooth they are slightly vertical now we can see that this long axis of the tooth and occlusal plane they form an angle of 90 degrees with each other so what does this suggest that the forces can easily traverse along the long axis of the tooth now as we move posteriorly the arc of closure is not similar to that of anterior teeth and even the direction of the biting force changes in case of posterior teeth the biting force they are always slightly mesially directed so as the forces are slightly mesially directed the first factor is the occlusal plane the occlusal plane is not parallel to the biting force and second factor whenever we draw the long axis of the tooth what we want is a 90 degree angle which does not form here so this is an acute angle which forms so what does this suggest that the forces will not traverse along the long axis of the tooth and the forces will direct directly harm the periodontium moving on to second case focusing on the molar again what the change we have done is we have given a forward tilt to the posterior teeth now as we have given the forward tilt and now we 
judge the direction of biting force it is slightly measly detected as we have seen earlier now drawing the occlusal plane these both are parallel and now we would draw a long axis of the tooth as we draw the long axis of the tooth it directly forms an angle of 90 degree with the biting force and now what does this suggest that as it is perpendicular to the angle of the biting force the force would easily dissipate along the long axis of the tooth so the main difference is the angle here that is an acute angle as we have kept the tooth straight now here we have given a forward tilt to the teeth as we have given a forward tilt automatically what we have got is a perpendicular angle between the biting force and the long axis of the tooth now giving the forward tilt to the posterior teeth as we move anteriorly the tilt decreases as we can see here in anterior teeth the tilt is not that much as that of posterior teeth so when, whenever we move anteriorly the tilt decreases and this change of tilt automatically give rise to the curve of speed from posterior to anterior or anterior to posterior coming on to importance of curve of speed now the very first point that is force dissipation along the long axis of the tooth this we have already discussed with the help of two figures and two cases moving on to next that is anterior guidance harmonization so the very basic criteria of anterior guidance as we all know that whenever we protrude the jaw in anterior direction what we get is edge to edge contact of the upper and lower incisal edges and at the same time what we get is the posterior disclusion so to achieve the posterior disclusion is very necessary because if this posterior does, teeth does not lose contact th this would ultimately give rise to interferences and further this would lead to the shear forces over the posterior teeth and as posterior teeth are not that trained to resist the shear forces so in that cases whenever we incorporate the curve of spi the curve of spi it automatically helps in the posterior disclusion of the teeth whenever we protrude the jaw coming on to next that is relationship with the masseter muscle as we can see in the figure this is curve of spi and this is masseter muscle masseter muscle we know that it comes from the zygomatic arch and then it inserts over the ramus of the mandible and the angle of the mandible so this masseter muscle and curve of spi they are perpendicular to each other if the curve of spi is incorporated properly it forms an angle of 90 degree to the masseter muscle and further this together helps in the adaptation of the loading forces moving on to next what will happen if the curve is too concave now if the curve is too concave or too high posteriorly just imagine that if the curve is too higher the posterior teeth is going to be higher so during protrusion the posterior teeth would definitely cause an interferences and we know what happens next is the wear of teeth tmj disturbances and muscle fatigue and lastly the revision of what we all read today firstly we discussed about plane of occlusion then we discussed its role and consequences if we do not give it into the dentition then further we read about compensating curves its types that antero posterior and medial lateral types and then today's focus was curve of spi so switching on to curve of spi we read firstly about its extent that is its it begins where then it follows and then it is continuous along then how does it forms with the help of those figures and then we read about interferences in this in that we read about three points force dissipation then masseter muscle relationship and anterior guidance harmonization and lastly what will happen that is same if the curve is too concave so that was all about today's video if you like my video please like share or subscribe my channel akshay bandari's dental videos see you soon in the next video thank you